Hey yes, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from Kingdom Hearts and Cross Nation. And today's video, we're going to be going over turtle setups and how to effectively use them in PvP. Now, I know there's quite a lot of uh, talk about uh, the game as of right now, at least when I'm making this video. Uh, particularly about the fact that I know a lot of people kind of consider turtle setups kind of useless, primarily because of the fact that metals such as Illustrated Kairi, uh, EX or Shion EX, as well as the stained glass metals exist in the game. And I'm essentially here to tell all of you who might be thinking al along this train of thought uh, that you are, you are basically wrong. Turtle setups, when used effectively and correctly, uh, can actually be really useful and like actually pretty potent uh, in the game mode uh, for PvP. Um, the problem that a lot of people are having is the fact that there it's pretty much two things. One, um, they're using them wrong like I kind of just stated. And the second one being that they don't actually completely understand what the purpose of turtle setups are actually supposed to be in PvP. As of right now, uh, at the time of making this video anyways, a lot of people are kind of pretty much concerned about the fact that like, oh, it's pretty much like, oh, did I, did I not win that round type of thing. And that type of mentality is part of the problem as to why a lot of people tend to think that turtle setups suck. Because the thing is, turtle setups are not meant to win that round at all. You're almost intentionally throwing that round um, in order to reap the rewards later in the game. By the very least, I'll be going over that today with all of you guys, um, as well as to, we'll be going over the basic concepts you need to know and remember when it comes to turtle setups, as well as I'll be writing some pretty uh, easy to follow illustrations as to how exactly they work uh, within PvP mode. All right, so without further ado, let's get started with the video. So before we get started with the illustrations and how exactly it looks like when you go about using turtle sets in PvP, um, we're going to start off with what are some of the basic concepts they need to uh, understand and realize when it comes to using turtle setups, right? Um, I kind of already mentioned more or less some of them already, but we're going to go over them again just to clarify. So the first concept that you need to understand when it comes to using turtle setups is the fact that you are not supposed to win that round that you use turtle setups on. I'm going to repeat this. You are not supposed to win. Now, for any of you curious as to why exactly would you want to throw a round in the first place in PvP, uh, here's the thing. Chances are, for the most part, when it comes to PvP, the most likely scenario that's going to happen for the majority of players is the fact that because we are only given three Keyblades to use every week for PvP, uh, what ends up going to happening for a majority of players is the fact that you're going to have one of your Keyblades is going to end up being the best setup that you can use for the for the most amount of damage and points. Um, then you'll have your second best setup and they're going to have that one setup that's just really weak compared to the other two or it's just absolute trash. Okay? <laughs> that's the most likely scenario that's going to happen to you in PvP. Um, there's probably going to be very rarely ever going to be a time where you, all three of your Keyblades are actually like top-notch Keyblades. They're absolutely perfect. And uh, if that's the case, you might as well just be first place in PvP. Okay, so it's very rarely ever going to happen for any of us. Even for, even for me, that's very unlikely to happen. Uh, and this is partially why turtle setups kind of come in handy. Out of the three setups, the one that ends up being the worst, we're actually going to take advantage of the fact that that setup is your worst setup. Uh, one of the reasons being that as you go up in rank, people are going to naturally have better and better setups that do more damage or at least have more strategy and such to uh, overpower you. In which case, that naturally also means that whatever your worst setup is, is going to have an increased chance as you go up in the rankings to consistently lose more and more against stronger opponents. That's just naturally going to happen. So, in that regards, if you're pretty much going to lose on your worst setup anyways, um, you might as well make a setup that even if it's going to lose that round, is still going to help you overall in the grand scheme of things, uh, which is also just helping to the strategy of the game. And this is the primary factor of what makes uh, turtle setups within PvP shine so much, is the fact that even though they are losing the round, they are still benefiting to the overall match to help you get that win overall, to help you get those two wins, all right? That is the that is the beauty of turtle setups. The second thing that you need to know about turtle setups, and I kind of mentioned it already, is that turtle setups are completely, like the whole point of a turtle setup is to set up for a future round. 
okay, for the next round. Because of the fact that you're gonna lose that round with whatever the turtle setup is in, your primary objective is to try and give as many buffs and debuffs to your next Keyblade in the next round as much as possible to help guarantee your win in the next round a lot more, all right? That is the whole point. But just keep in mind that turtle setups are supposed to uh, set up and help increase your chances of winning the next round. The third thing that you need to know is the fact that turtle setups are best for defending. They are not meant for attacking whatsoever. Turtle setups thrive the most when you use them as a defending uh, setup. So basically, whenever you would go second within a round is when a turtle setup is going to be the most effective. So like for example, because the fact in PvP it is an attacker based system, this means that if you are the attacker, you are going to go first round one, uh, second in round two, and first again in round three. And if you're a defender, you're going to go second round one, uh, first in round two, and second again in round three. And it's trying to take advantage of when you actually get to go second, depending on which of the uh, sides that you want to focus on, whether or not you want to focus on trying to use turtle uh, strategies properly for when you're the attacker, or if you want to try to use it properly when you're the defender, okay? It's on. It's depending on which uh, spectrum of the fight that you're trying to focus on for the turtle strategy that ends up affecting how it plays out correctly. Uh, the last thing that you need to know about turtle setups is the fact that you have to use metals who have abilities that last for at least two or more turns. Because remember, back to what I was saying before, the whole point of a turtle setup within PvP is the fact it's supposed to be uh, a bunch of metals whose effect carry over into the next round. And if you only have metals, if you only have turtle metals in your setup that only last for one turn, um, that just makes the whole setup completely pointless. And at that point, you really are just throwing that round. And it's not benefiting your, your overall strategy at all whatsoever. Okay, so just keep that in mind. You do have to use metals whose abilities last for two or more turns. I should also state, by the way, just in case as well, because of the fact you are going to be throwing that round anyways, and it is a turtle setup, you don't have to use any buffer debuffer metals within the turtle setup. Um, the whole point of using a buffer and debuffer metal within turtle setups is simply to try and create more damage for the rest of the setup. Uh, but because of the fact turtle setups don't do much damage in the first place and you're not trying to win anyways, you don't have to use any of the uh, main buffer debuffer metals such as like Kairi Shoni X or like stained glass metals. You don't need to use metals like this. By the very least, now that I've actually gone over some of the basic concepts you need to, get, you need to know, uh, let me go ahead and give you guys a little illustration of how exactly turtle setups work uh, in PvP and how they actually play out. So as of right now, we are currently looking at a uh, picture that I made in Photoshop um, to help illustrate to you guys how exactly the turtling setups work in regards to PvP. And we're going to be looking both from the point of view of an attacker person as well as when you're defending. So we're going to be looking from both points of view. Uh, starting off with an attacker, right? So as of right now, if we are the attacker and we want to use turtle setups, um, because of the fact that turtle setups are only meant to set up for the next round, um, that automatically means that you do not want to use turtle setups at all whatsoever within round three. Okay, just don't don't use them round three. Right? They are pretty much as of right now only meant for turns one and two. All right. So just keep that in mind. And this is both as a attacker and a defender. So just throwing that out there. But at least in terms of attacking, uh, this does mean, and I have them list here on the, uh, on the picture already, uh, but that does mean that you're going to go first turn one, uh, and your opponent's going to go second, and then it's going to swap back and forth like usual. But turn one as an attacker, what's going to end up happening is, if you are using a turtle setup turn one, you're going to end up using your defensive buffs from your turtle setup, um, and that's it, okay? Then after that, it goes to your opponent's turn, in which case they'll probably end up using their Kairi Shoni EX or Stained Glass Models or whatnot. Um, and what's going to end up happening naturally is that they're going to erase all of your buffs that you just did with your total setup. Um, in which case, because of the fact they did erase them, um, they will not carry over into the next round. And remember, carrying over into the next round is our primary goal in terms of PvP. Now, unfortunately, um, it's solely because of the fact that this is this is the, as far as people are going in terms of turtle setups, and this is why people think that turtle setups suck. 
Um, and that's kind of part of the problem because they're not realizing the overall picture. This is only part of the equation. There's a lot more to it than just this. People are only looking at it from the attacker's point of view and people will end up trying to use their total setups on the first round. And because they only use them for the first round as an attacker, they only see what's in front of them so they just automatically assume it's terrible. And I'm about to show you guys why exactly uh, that's not exactly so. So after stating that, let's go ahead and take a look at round two. Because of the fact that you are the attacker, you're gonna go second, all right? And your opponent's gonna go first this time. So what's gonna end up happening is that your opponent's gonna attack with medals like Kyrie and Shonen X, for example. They will get their buffs and debuffs and such, and they'll do damage and everything. Um, but at the end of the round, because of the fact that Kyrie and Shonen X and Sting Glass medals and such, their effects only last for one turn. So what's gonna happen is uh, all the debuffs and buffs as well that they just apply to both you and them at the end of the turn after they use all their setups and stuff before it even becomes your turn they're gonna all disappear because remember in pvp all single turn effects automatically disappear uh, when you transition to the next player's turn uh, so in that regards we are starting off with a complete clean slate uh, on our turn for round two so because of this, what ends up happening is uh, we use our turtle setup, we get our defensive buffs, and because we're the last person to go in that round and we still have our defensive buffs, what ends up happening is uh, they will get to carry over into the next round, so in this case round three. So that way when we actually attack round three, we still have our defensive buffs. And because of the fact the opponent try now has to get past the defensive buffs we have, they need to also try and get that max debuff now too. They have to they have to work twice as hard to get past those debuffs. They're going to do a significantly lot less damage to you compared to than what you do to them for that round. Um, and this is just without taking status ailments into effect. If you happen to be using status ailments within turn three as well, for example, and you can even make them skip their first two medals uh, in round three, they're basically screwed. Because uh, not only are they going to miss all their buffs and debuffs, but you also have like ridiculously high amounts of H of defense right here. So that even if they do happen to try and have something within their third through six metal and such to try and recover from it, they're not going to really be able to get past your defense and such. Um, so they're basically screwed turn three solely because of the fact that you you were able to get your, your buffs to carry over for turn three. So now that we've taken a look at the attacking side, of the scenario now let's go ahead and take a look at as to how exactly turtling will work out if you're the defender this time all right someone is attacking you and trying to steal your rank so in this regards we are the defending player this time um the opponent for round one uh the opponent gets to go first because they are the attacker and is that's how it works and you're the defender so you're going to go second for round one so this is what's going to happen it's almost going to be the opposite of what it was like as the attacker all right, so your opponent gets to go first round one, and they attack. All right, then with like Kyrie Shiny X and Sting Glass Medals and all that good jazz, uh, they get the buffs and debuffs, and then at the end of their turn, like I explained last time, uh, all of their one turn effects from those type of medals disappear, um, and then you're left with a clean slate again. And then it becomes your turn for uh, round one. You get your defensive buffs, and because of the fact that you're the last person to go and you finish your setup, um, you still have your defensive buffs and they do get to carry over into round two. And then it's from here, just kind of like how I showed as the attacker for round three, how like because you have so much defense and you can overpower them and like not including or with including status elements and stuff. Uh, the same thing just happens in this regard for round two instead, uh, if you happen to use turtle setups within round one. Uh, now that we've taken a look at round one, let's go ahead and take a look at what would happen if you use a turtle setup during round two. Um, it's basically going to be almost the exact type of scenario as it would be if you're trying to attack round one with the turtle setup. All right. So round two, because of the fact you are the defender, you get to go first. So what ends up so what ends up happening is you provide all your defensive buffs from your turtle setup, and that's it. You end your turn from there. There's nothing else you can do. It goes to your opponent's turn, and because of Kyrie X, stained glass models and such, uh, they erase your buffs and debuffs with those type of metals. Um, and because of the fact you don't have your defensive buffs anymore, they don't get to carry over. Um, so your round three doesn't take care of it. This is essentially how turtle setups work within PvP. And one of the main problems that I'm pretty sure most people aren't really thinking about or taking the time to think about and uh, realize and understand is the fact that it's not about trying to win the round 
uh, with the turtle setup. It's about trying to set up the next round. As you guys saw in my little presentation that I just had right now, um, the turtle setups appear to seem to do uh, the best when used when going second. Uh, so in that regards, when you are attacking, turtle setups are best to use for round two because they can help set up a win for round three. As well as if you're trying to def so let's say for example you only have one try left for the day, um, you can set up your setups so that way they get saved for that last battle uh, for when people fight against you. Um, you can make it so that your setup your first setup for round one uh, is a turtle setup because that turtle setup uh, will actually carry over into round two to help guarantee that win. And this is pretty much how you want to take advantage and look at for turtle setups and stuff. Now in case this still doesn't happen to uh, convince you that turtle setups aren't really that good or that effective because there's always going to be that skeptic that's, that, that still thinks like, mm, I don't believe you, okay. Um, so luckily for me, I was fortunate enough to have one of my followers um, be able to actually to fight me in PvP. And he was even kind enough to record his fight against me as well. Uh, and where I was actually using one of my old turtle strategies uh, within the first week of PvP. Um, and he sent it to me and I'll be playing it on the screen. Alright. Alright, so as of right now, it is the beginning of the battle. Alright. And they're using a pretty standard setup within their first turn setup in which they are just going full on damage. They have like multiple EA medals and stuff with stained glass and such. Uh, and they're just pretty much just trying to go to town <laughs> a first turn. Um, as you guys can tell right now too, uh, they did put status ailment effects on me as well to try and get rid of my Asuna, um, which is only natural for turn one, um, to try and possibly inflict me with status ailments and stuff for later turns and such. Okay. So now it's end of their turn, we're going to my turn. So our Asuna got rid of the Saddle Simmons, and now we're just going full on defense, all right? And at this point, because of the fact that the attacker already did their turn, they're not gonna be able to get rid of the defense. And I'm just inflicting as many uh, defensive buffs as possible to be able to help carry into the next turn, as well as the fact that I'm also dealing their status element effects on them as well to get rid of their Asuna. Um, and as you can tell, if you just take a look at my character, I have max defense at this point, right? So now that round one is over, uh, they won, which is normal because I was throwing with the turtle setup. That's the whole point. And now I still have my defensive buffs round two, okay? And my round two setup, because I knew I was going to be defending, I put my strongest setup uh, to deal max damage to them. And I inflicted status ailments on them as well. Uh, to not only try and get them to skip their medals uh, for round two, but but I also get large amounts of points for round two. And they also have to try and get past my defense as well. Um, as well as trying to avoid the status elements, which kind of sucks for them. But as you can see right here, like, look at this. Look at Le Lexius, okay? He's not doing nearly as many points as he normally would be in PvP. He's he's barely doing nearly as much uh, damage and gaining as many points as, like, you would hope so within the game. And look at that right there, okay? Look at the point difference. I basically have an extra 4 million extra points uh, compared to them solely because of the fact that I had... Uh, defense i had just had a significant amount of defense that were able to carry on into round two and that made the biggest of difference for round two the whole point of a turtle setup is to help solidify the win for the next round and this clip right here is a very good and one of the best examples i could show you guys to help prove and show you guys that total setups actually really do work um, but only if you do them properly and you understand like why they work but at the very least big shout out to Sai retributor uh, for recording the clip and sending it to me. I really appreciate it, man. But other than that, that was it for today, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it insightful. I know a lot of people were pretty much confused about Turtle Metals um, and didn't really completely understand it. So I hope this helps out. Um, I've also left a nice little kind of like turtle guide uh, as well. I'll be leaving a link down below in case you wish to download it or something and share it amongst your friends and whatnot. But at the very least, I hope you found this useful. Uh, my name is Brian from Kingdom Martin Cross Nation, and I will see you guys in the next video.
Peace.